Welcome to the Ghostman Radio Station, and tonight my guest is Merrick Rosenberg. I think I may have said that right. He's a leading personality expert and award-winning bestseller of Taking Flight and The Chameleon, both two books about the power of personality. As a keynote speaker, he shares his entertaining, insightful way of learning about ourselves and others with people all over the world. He's a certified more than 500 trainer to share his Reimagined approach to personality types he refers to owls, parrots, doves, and the eagles. Audience members see themselves in the conversation as they enjoy answering the question, which bird are you? He found the Team Builders Plus in 1991, taking flight learning in 2012. He teaches more than 100,000 people, 100, people more to, to use, how to use a person to build relationships, how to lead happy lives. Then for the pattern that predicts who will win presidential elections based solely on personality, which I think American politics is probably based on anyway, and probably over here now in England as well. The pattern has been consistent. It's been, it's been held for 200, 222 consecutive elections, going all the way back to 1932. I don't think he's born in 1932, though. And history you say the manner and personality will decide who will win in 2020. We know who won now, but I think. The personality that was described, we, he was called Slow Joe, but we, we sort of sort of discussed that with Merrick in a minute. Hi, Merrick. How are you today? I'm very good. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Now, obviously, as your th- thing is about personality, well, I think we could sort of see how the how we would describe COVID eight nineteen as a personality. Sure. Well, maybe a good place to start is. Let's look at the four types of personalities, and you mentioned it a moment ago. We've got eagles and parrots and doves and owls. So I'll give you a little sense of what they're all about, and then we can see how they're playing out in the world around us today. So picture an eagle. Eagles are confident. They are assertive. They take charge. They're direct. You've got parrots. You can probably imagine they're talkative. They're fun. They're social. They're outgoing. Then we've got doves who... think around the world are symbols of peace and harmony and compassion and caring and of course the logical owl accurate and precise and they ask lots of questions so personality plays out in everything we do obviously uh, in a global pandemic we are seeing our personalities play out in every action uh, you know it's, I, I joked towards the beginning of the pandemic that parrots who just are so social this idea of social distancing to a parrot is like a nightmare. Parrots want to be out there and talking to people, and the idea that they had to be home for a year was incredibly distressing for them. Whereas I had a friend who's an owl, and he was like, I have been preparing for this my whole life. Uh, you know, The idea that I could be home, no one's going to bother me, I can just do my thing, I, I don't need to see people, this is great. <laughs> Sign me up for this, you know, working from home uh, for the next year or so. You can imagine doves, of course, just they, they felt so bad. They want to make sure everybody's okay. And eagles were like, hey, I can still work from home. I can get results anywhere. I'm good. So it's been fascinating to watch how personalities played out over the past year. And it's true because we, because we've, so-called freedoms have been took away. I mean, I think there's a bit of an un- overused expression because when you think about it, most people go work, sleep, work, bed, weekend out, or watch a football game, that's, or cricket, baseball, whatever. That tends to be the average life. It, I know it's a bit in a nutshell, but you know that seems to be most people how they run it. And then suddenly, because they can't go to this football game, well, they can't, like you say, be social, go out to the pub or go out and do anything or be part of the crowd cheering their team on. It's suddenly they, 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 they can't cope. They, they've suddenly gone crazy. They, they, they... Without a doubt. Because, because we have these inherent needs to, especially the doves and the parrots who are so people oriented, they need to be with people. And it was so stressful for them all year to just not have that human interaction in just be in the same room with people and, and to be able to hug somebody for the dove. I mean, that was just traumatic. And so ho- hopefully we're coming out of this now and, uh, and things will return back to whatever the quote new normal is. Things may change, but at least we'll, people are going out again and, and it's, 
beginning to return back. I think the wise the wise owl would say that it, it, it's that we have to learn to live with the pandemic now. I think we realise we've let it rule us instead of us. I know, I'm not underestimating the deaths. You know, I'm, it, all deaths is tragic. You know, but when it gets to a stage where when we think about it, we accept a lot of deaths, don't we? Motorways, uh, cancer, heart, lungs. We do all this and we don't, we come up, we feel sorry, but not as bad as what we have lately. Because we've had, a, I think we've experienced what they call mental health, massive hysteria, where we've all grabbed onto the death tolls. It's like a, like a, oh, we're not number one anymore. Yay! Sort of thing. Yeah, and, and I think you hit on something big as well, which is just the amount of stress that people had this year. And the fact that each of these styles handles stress differently. You have parrots who, when they're stressed, it's like colorful feathers flying everywhere. Everybody knows, like, worst day ever. Whereas doves keep their stress in, and they really internalize it, and they worry about everybody. And so we had a lot of doves this year that were very concerned about everybody else. And and owls, too, they keep their stress in. They're trying to figure out, all right, what am I supposed to do? What can we do? What can't we do? And they're trying to analyze to figure out what needs to happen. And eagles are just taking charge. All right, here's what we're going to do. But it was an interesting year to watch people's different stress response to what's happening in the world around us. Now, obviously, when you was watching the, the recent election, we had two different styles of personality. I think... Biden deliberately underplayed it to make, I think yeah. he, he made Trump virtually shoot himself in the foot. That, that's exactly right. You have, you have Donald Trump, who is an eagle with the dial cranked up several notches. I mean, directness becomes blunt and, and confidence you know, becomes arrogance, maybe even narcissism. And, and so you have Donald Trump, who's this extreme eagle. Biden throughout his whole career has been the parrot. He's funny, he, he jokes with people, he makes a lot of verbal mistakes, a lot of gaps, because he speaks before he thinks. He's done that his whole career. And I think what they did throughout the, the election was they said, you know what, don't give them any ammo. Just, we're going to stay home, let let Donald Trump keep, keep talking because he's hurting himself. You be the dove. You be the consoler in chief. You talk about people about how much you care for them and how sad this is and how we have to work together and, and support each other to make it through this. And he did. He, re- he became the dove during this election. And, and I think he's still, in many ways, is, is being that, trying to be that dove unifier. Now he's traveling around the world and he's meeting different world leaders. And I think he's intentionally, to your point, downplayed the parrot at big energy to be more of the dove style. But also because... At the moment, everybody needs a trade deal to sort of make sure the the economy is still going. I think everyone is trying to be this dove because, like you say, nobody wants to be the dominant one too much because they think, well, if I upset him, I might not get this. And if I upset him, I might not I see, we've got the situation in Europe. I don't know if you know what's happening in the UK, where we've come out of Europe and we basically went, bye. And they went, no, don't leave us. Yeah, and and now they're making it a bit difficult, but you know, um, yeah, we're even having a, a discussion about sausages, whether they should be sold in 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 the Northern Ireland or not. I'm going, uh-huh. yeah. Well, Brexit was a very eagle action. Like yeah. we're out, done. Right? It was not a very dove. Hey, how can we work together? How can we support each other? How can we be one? Uh, it was. Hey, we're on our own. We're doing it. And, uh, and now it's the challenge of, of dialing up that dove again to create unity and bring everybody together. It's amazing. As you say, personality, we underestimate all the time. It's like sportsmen. Um, I don't know if you know a snooker at all. There's a player called S- Steve Davis. He was deliberately very focused, very, the game was everything. That, that owl style. Here's yeah. the goal here focused on it, probably owl and eagle, probably very accurate, where I'm sure you can name a lot of, of, uh, of football players, for example, that are just charismatic and they score a goal and, and there's just big energy and excitement. And you can see the difference between I'm focused, I'm going to pay 
attention to exactly what needs to happen. And the person who's got the big smile is playing to the crowd, just totally different energy. You can see that on the field, a parrot versus an owl. Yeah, and but you need both personalities, to all four, to make a team, don't you? But like you say, it's normally the the the, the flair player, the parrot that gets all the like uh, Jordan for basketball. Sure, Michael Jordan. Yeah, uh, although he actually had a lot of eagle too. He was like, "We're gonna win. We are gonna <laughs> we're gonna make it happen." Uh, and you know, there's these stories of how uh, other players have have said things to him during a game just to just to taunt him a little bit and he would make them pay. He would be like, oh yeah, now we're going to have to beat you and we're going to have to beat you very bad. <laughs> and so it's uh, you can absolutely see personality play out on a team. And it is true. When you have a team that's got a great mix of styles, you've got the eagles and parrots and doves and owls, it really is powerful. You see it in companies, we see it in sports. Now, why did you choose birds as, for the personality traits? It's an interesting thing. I wanted it to be visual. You know, so many different personality systems use letters or colors, but people don't remember them. If I were to say to you, okay, here's what the letter D is, or here's what the color blue is, two hours from now you'd forget what the letter D is. But if two hours from now I say, all right, tell me about an eagle, you'd probably still say, well, they seem pretty confident and pretty assertive. And, and that's the thing is that if they're visual, it's easy to remember. And if you can't remember it, you can't be using it. So I had to make it something very accessible for people. I, do, I think it's a brilliant idea because I even seen, I'm listening there now. It's like you said, you're thinking, what kind of bird am I? I can be a bit of a parrot, sometimes a little bit eagle when I'm in was working. I don't, I don't because I'm a bit shy as a kid. And then now, because sometimes I overanalyze. So, like, I'm sort of like a bundle, but it depends which one wins the fight. We have them all. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And we all have all of them. But there's probably one or two which are like home base for you. For me, my parrot is my strongest style. I get to travel around the world and stand on a stage and make people laugh and help people learn about themselves and the people in their lives. And as a parrot, that feeds me. Uh, if I was an owl, had to get on a stage and make people laugh, that might be uncomfortable. So I, I do have owl in me. I can be detail-oriented if I need to be. But the reality is that my core style is the parent style. Now tell me a little bit about your books. The first one I've got on the list because I've got looking at Amazon list. So I've yes. got the Comedian Student Edition, Life-Changing Wisdom for Everyone as a Personality who Knows Someone. So can you tell me like a – as much as you want to tell me briefly about that sure. book. So uh, The Chameleon, I have a, a regular edition. I also have a student edition for high school and college students. Uh, and the, what The Chameleon is, it's 22 fables. Each fable, each story teaches a different lesson of the four styles. So there's eagles, parrots, doves, and owls. But there's also, as you were describing yourself, I have a little bit of everything. That's what The Chameleon is. They flex, they adapt to what needs to happen. So in each of the fables... There's a chameleon who pops in, spouts some interesting personality wisdom, and then disappears. And so uh, it's, each fable teaches you a little bit about how do you interact in the world. And, and look, you'll see yourself in the stories. They're fun. But the reality is, you know, we all have a little bit of each of those. And if you're married, you have a spouse or children, you will probably see your, your experiences in those stories. Did you use fables because, like, in the... Um... The days of the Greeks, they used to use sagas to explain their heroic, um, people's heroic feats, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think all great wisdom is passed down through stories, whether it's Aesop's fables or these Greek tragedies, these Greek adventures. I think we, we learn through stories. You know, instead of me saying, I'll give you an example of one of them. Instead of me saying, look, owls are very structured and organized, Parrots are, are very free-flowing. They go with the flow. Uh, they're multitaskers. I, I tell this story of how there's been a terrible storm in the forest, and some of the sparrows, these birds in the, in the forest, their nests have all been destroyed. And the owls have prepared for this. They have created these sparrow nest kits so that uh, in case there's a great storm, we can rebuild the nest for them. And uh, the, the, what we get to witness is a parrot and an owl, and they're each tasked with building a new nest. And we look over at the owl, and he 
companies taking out each of the components and inspecting it and lining them up and counting them, the owls reading the instructions. We look over at the parrot who's ripped open the bag and just started building, and it looks like a mess. They're there's extra pieces in the end. They don't know exactly what they're doing. But you can see that the owl and the parrot have two completely different styles. So you, yeah, I see myself in that story. I'm a parrot. My wife is an owl. And, and I think a lot of people see themselves in the fables like, oh, my God, that's what I would do. Oh, it drives me crazy when people do that. So it makes it fun. And yeah, I think when we can laugh at ourselves, uh, it gives us insight into who we are. Am I right in saying that someone has somehow translated this into Spanish? Uh, yeah, I actually have my first book, uh, which is Taking Flight, which is uh, one long fable, uh, and that's in, in a variety of languages. It's in uh, seven languages around the world, uh, and it's a lot of fun. It, it, I think of Taking Flight as I wrote one long story. It was like writing a movie about the birds and uh, the the chameleon is 22 fables. It was like writing a, se a television season of a sitcom, <laughs> each with a different episode, a different storyline, a different lesson. I do like the drawings of the, the your eagle and uh, the parrot, the dove and the uh, owl. Was it done by someone like yourself or did you hire someone to do it? Yeah, I had an artist create the, the drawings of the birds, and it was an interesting challenge, too, because, you, uh, you know, you want the eagle to be confident, but not arrogant. You want the parrot to convey fun, but not be too goofy. And and so each of the, the birds, the images, really needed to embody the energy of that style. And I, I have a new book coming out later this year called Which Bird Are You?, which is a children's book. So I actually have children images of the birds, and they really capture the energy of the style. I think I think that the the way you've told me about the stories and the fables, I think this would work on something like Nickelodeon, you know, like a small little emanation. I always try to say it's cartoon, yeah. but they don't call it cartoon. Oh, I, I agree. I've always envisioned that where it, where children can watch it and see themselves in the stories, and maybe there's a little chameleon that pops out and and shares some wisdom at the end, like all great fables. There's always that lesson. Here's what you should have learned here. And, and I think it. they could learn little life lessons. They like without realizing they learn it. Say like one yeah. of them has to sort out a school bully, and they one does it the wrong way. You know, you know, I want to confront them. I want to fight them. Sort of thing. The other ones like, no, 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 don't do this. You've got to do yeah, this. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, know, like, you have this clash, and people tell you these things, and I think that would work. I really think that would work. And it's fun. The, the birds make it fun. And I, I think that, look, the most interesting topic of all, of course, is ourselves. And so when we're learning about ourselves, it's inherently interesting. And I think people want to learn about who we are. It's, it's that age-old question. It's probably the oldest question. Who am I? And, uh, and I, people are just, I think people are always on that quest. Do you think as we grow, our personalities do change? Yes, for some people they do. I, we have an assessment that people take so you can see your style. And many people will say to me, you know, when I was younger, my style was very different. Uh, I look at my job now. I'm standing on a stage and I'm talking to people. I was actually pretty reserved as a child. I, I would have never imagined this is what I would do in my career. And I, I was even more of an owl when I was a kid. And I, my parrot just has overtaken my owl for sure at this point in my life. But my style changed as I've grown I like your website. I like the way you've styled it. The books, like scattered across, like a like cards almost. You know, you can see all the the books lined up, all the yeah, different iterations. Yeah. A little microphone, obviously, because you're a speaker. Do you do podcasts as well, or have you not considered that? Do what? Say that again. Have you done a podcast as well, or you not? Oh, I can. You know, I, I haven't done my own podcast, although just as we're talking now, I, I actually just enjoy hopping into other people's podcasts and talking with them. And, and what makes it fascinating is, is everybody has a slightly different angle. And so to be able to be on a podcast where someone's talking about relationships or sales or golf uh, or real estate or, or and you name it, and, and uh, to be able to link the birds to whatever they're focusing on. It's actually a lot of fun. I've, I've been on a lot of podcasts talking about parenting and, and how do you raise children. And, 
Uh, it's actually, I, I love doing that. It, it, variety is fun for me. Um, looking now at your blog, which is very, um, obviously you've got the bird traits again, obviously to show that what you've, that, that, that you've got a wish on you, what this was before, building respect with the personality styles, personality is a funny thing. Yeah, and then people, when people f- first hear this, they're probably thinking, oh, what the hell is he on about? What does he know? He talk, he's talking about birds. What's, that? What's birds have got to do first that? Yeah. And then when they actually yeah. listen properly and they look at your books and read them like the fables and the, the long story as well, they're going to look at it and they go, hang on a minute. Yeah, I, I am that bird. I never thought of that before. And, and then they realise at work, because when you're working, you have to be a certain different kind of person or personality. It's same as, like, it, when I was in care work, I had to be a bit more authoritative instead of being a bit laid back because the, I used to deal with mental health patients. And if you were too right. bit laid back, they'd pick on it and they would sense it. Yeah, you know, they would know. Dial up to the eagle there. Yeah, yeah. they would. They, they like the eagle. They prefer the right. eagle to the dove because the dove is like, Oh, we've met this person before, but we've heard the eagle. Alexa, off. That's like my Alexa. You're exactly correct. That's exactly what happens. Sometimes we're different at work than we are at home because the job we're in requires a different bird style. And, and to help people to really understand that, like what does your spouse need? What do your children need? If you're a manager, what do the people who report to you, what does is, what is your team need? And that's really powerful. And a lot of times what we realize is that we impose our personality on other people. That I think, well, say I'm an owl. I like a lot of detail. I'm going to provide you with a ton of information. Yeah, but you're talking to an eagle. And the eagle's just tuning out. They don't want a ton of information. So we impose our personality on people all the time. And that's one of the big lessons that I try to convey to people. Yeah, I I found that if I was sort of up front with them and said to them, look, I can do this, I can do that. And if they was like shouting hollering, I would go, am I speaking to you like this? Am I shouting? Am I hollering? Am I swearing? No. Okay. I even had one incident where, um, one, this <laughs> incident, well, I won't name them. Um, he was threatened to put a chair over my head. And I said, I said, oh, if you do that, I'm going to do it back. And his other resident said to me, he was going to do that. I said, no, but he doesn't know that, does he? Yeah, it's right. just that, like you say, personality straight away. You was right. sort of like so reflecting. What you did in that, that example is we should be like a mirror reflecting back their style to them. So if I'm talking to an owl and they provide me with a lot of information, I should reflect that back to them and give them a lot of information. I mean, can you imagine an owl writes an email and has 14 questions with sub-questions and bullets, sends it off to an eagle, and the eagle writes back, sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. The owl's like, what sounds good? I have questions. I need answers, detailed answers. And, and the, the key is to think about who am I talking to and what do they need and reflect that back to them. And I see also you're on uh, YouTube as well. Oh, yeah, you- lots, of, lots of videos of talking about the birds in action. Well, that, we that's good. I, I like that. And also you've got um, your new, I think it's, is it new? Uh, personality Wins, who will take yes. the White House and how we know that you've got a little book trailer. I think book yeah. trailer is important. I always tell people when they come on and they've never done one, I say, just make one. Don't matter how yeah. basic it is, how simple it is, it works. Because people remember it, they put it in their head, and they'll go and look for the book. Absolutely. Look, you make a trailer for a movie, you make a trailer for a book. People are visual. I create something visual that helps them understand what's in the book itself, and it brings it to life for people. I think it's it's a such a simple way to promote what you're sharing with the world. Do you think, like, say we'll go ahead, we've, we've gone through the pandemic, we've still got people like myself who are a little bit worried about going into crowds, and don't really want to mix too much with people if we can avoid it. I'm being honest there. I think there's people, lots of people like me still. I don't think that's going to be around a lot longer than people 
expect it to be. I think it's like back to the the owl bit saying to me logically, oh, yeah. <laughs> but the parrot wants to go, yeah. But do you think a lot of us are going to be a bit more like that? Oh, absolutely. I think it, for for some people, they're just ready to go. I'm vaccinated. I'm going out. And for other people, especially those owls, they're going to be thinking about it. They're going to be looking at the research. Is this safe? Isn't it safe? Uh, can I be inside in a restaurant? Should I just still eat outside? Should I be wearing a mask still? Uh, I, I think that, for example, those owls, they are really researching what's happening. Parrots are much more likely to say, I'm fine. I'm vaccinated. I'm headed out. <laughs> Parrots have, have little fear. What's the worst thing that could happen? And then they're talking to their spouse who's an owl and their spouse is like, I'll tell you what could happen. Here's what could happen. <laughs> so I agree with you. I think it's going to take quite a while. Um, it doves, it, it takes a while for their, them to expand their comfort zone. I think especially the doves are going to take a while until they're comfortable uh, going out. It's going to be like one step at a time. Like first I'll, I'll eat outside at a restaurant. And, you know, it's like that's the first step. But I think you're right. I think it's going to be around for quite a while for a lot of people. And also in business, I think if you've got a very strong personality, we say someone like um, the man uh, Richard Branson behind Virgin. I mean, he started off in a telephone box. Right. I mean, look at him, right? He yeah. starts a, a record company. I'm gonna, I, could, I could run an airline. Look great an airline. You know, I mean, he just absolutely, he's such a parrot. I mean, tra- it decides, I'm going to travel around the world in a hot air balloon. I'm going to be the first person to circumnavigate the world. And as his, as his balloon is crashing, he's saying to himself, that's it. I am never doing this again. Yeah? The second time as he's trying to circumnavigate the, the planet, as it's crashing, that's it. I am never doing that again. I mean, he just, but that's the parrot. Eh, what could happen? Yeah, it crashed. Eh, it won't crash this time. Richard Branson's parrot optimism is what has driven his career and his success. You can see his parrot in everything he does. Uh, yeah, you see, then, then there are other people who relate to this now. They they look at other, they look at other, because um, they having this debate over here that a personality shouldn't rule politics. You know, it shouldn't be the personality behind the politics. By thinking, well, those days are gone. The days when it was just the our facts. And figures and dates and this co- this government did this. We're going to do that. Oh, gone. Nobody listens. Nobody cares. Unless you're going to stand out in front of the crowd. That's what. That's why Boris Johnson, our prime minister, is popular. Although some people hate him, it's because of his personality. He knows. He's not stupid. He no, plays to exactly it. Exactly right. But the, you're 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 hitting on the theme of my of my last book, Personality Wins, which is personality wins elections. That wasn't true a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago, where did we learn about politicians? In the written media, in newspapers. And you know what? Owls sounded very wise, and so did doves. They sounded thoughtful in the written media. But today, where we live in this quick soundbite, something on Twitter, a little video on Instagram, when we see these fast little snappy videos, someone like Boris Johnson or Donald Trump is going to win because they... They, they are provocative, and they speak in sound bites, and they have energy and charisma, whether you agree or disagree with their politics. It's politics of personality, and it wins, and it, and it, it keeps winning. It's fascinating to watch. And then, then you've got the opposite. You can sometimes choose a personality that you think people are going to like, but they rub people right up the wrong way. You know what I mean? Yeah. They really rub the... Like we had the football league um thing over here with the american buyers and some other buyers we're going to make trying to make this super league and it went down like a bomb it literally that the, though they wanted it the fans went nope you're not having it <laughs> yeah sometimes we don't realize uh, you know you look at television shows and you look at the most popular ones they have personalities that just pop from the screen and when you have multiple characters you have such divergent personalities because they just butt heads. They clash with each other. And and it really is about personality. I'm not, and I'm not saying that big personalities make better leaders, but big personalities win big elections. And, and that's happening all over the world. We're watching it in, 
countries all over the world. It's not, I'm in the U.S., it's not just Donald Trump. Boris Johnson's a great example that he's got a big personality and he won. I think, I know this is going to sound a bit bizarre and probably people might disagree with me here. I think one of the best persons that did the personality thing was Hitler. Believe it or well, not. You know, you know, it's interesting because years and years ago there was, there was a book, it was in 1928, and it was called The Emotions of Normal People. And, and, it's, and it talked about these four styles, which the birds parallel those same four styles. And what he was saying was, that your personality, these styles apply to, quote, normal people. But the reality is somebody like Hitler, uh, you know, he was actually a very meticulous painter. He actually had a lot of owl, but he also had a lot of charisma that generated a movement and a following, which is somewhat parrot. He also had a lot of eagle. You know, it's his behavior is the reality is they didn't really flow from these four birds. Somebody who kills millions of people those behaviors are flowing from a, an, an imbalance in the brain. Um, but there's no doubt he created a following, and, and that's happened many times around the world. Yeah, yeah, I just thought I'd use him as a sample, because I know people are going to say, don't be silly, Mike, you can't say things like that. But I thought, well, you had Manson in America, didn't you? And he's still popular now. Well, the problem is that when you have a personality and you dial it up way too much, it becomes unhealthy. So you take the eagle dial it up too much and you get narcissistic personality disorder. You, know, you take the owl and you dial that up and you can get obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, you take the parrot and they become just uh, histrionic, like, oh my God, this is the biggest thing ever or the worst thing ever. The doves become borderline. They become so clingy and, and, and so needy. And, and so when, when you overuse your strengths, I mean, and I, I'm talking not just a little, like, crank that dial up a lot your personality can actually go to a place of a disorder and that's when it's a problem that's when it's it can negatively impact others it certainly negatively impacts themselves so i think we see that in, in some of those people who are that, that sociopath it's just too far it's just too much out there do you help companies with helping to deal with their personalities in the firm yeah that's 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 really what my, my business with take flight learning does is go into organizations and we teach them how to tap into the power of personality. We teach leaders how to use their personality without imposing it on their staff. We teach individuals how to understand their own personality so they can service customers better, get along better with their fellow employees. Uh, that's, and it's, it's powerful. And once again, we love learning about ourselves, but we also like learning about how we can better interact with other people and create a great culture. And uh, you know, if I look back at my career years from now and I say, wow, I helped people to be happier and create better lives for themselves and get along better, then that will have been time well spent. And, and I feel like I'm doing that. So it's a. I, 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 think, I, I think you will, Merrick, because as I say, obviously you know how to talk because you've learned the keynote to speech. I mean, I'm mean, not, not criticizing, but that's how you've got to, when you're a key worker speaker, you have to engage the audience don't you that's how you you learn it it's it, you also have as you say you have to be that parrot personality as well but you have to learn how to project your voice how to engage a crowd as well don't you it's not as a skill as easy as people think it is well you know what the beautiful thing about knowing the birds is that we always talk about know your audience when i get up in front of an audience i hit all four styles I'm like, all right, bottom line, here's what we're going to do today. Let me tell you what, this is going to be fun. We're going to talk about how you can impact people's lives. So let me walk you through step by step and show you how to do it. What did I do? I hit eagle, parrot, dove, and owl. And here's the beauty of that. When I do that all throughout the talk, I have eagle moments, parrot moments, dove, and owl moments. When you display all four styles, guess who you appeal to? All right, you appeal to everyone. And, and many speakers just stay within their one style and it may not connect with the broader audience. And so for me, I'm very conscious of when I'm interacting with people, I, you know, a large group of people, I make sure I hit all four styles and then you connect with, the, with I, everyone there. I notice when you watch the news, I don't know if it is in America as well, how well they pronounce their words. Is if, when it's a serious bit, they always say, today, there has been 36 people die in 
well in the country. And he was so much made like your ears go ding. Right, absolutely. It, and that's the owl part of them being very clear and sharp in how they communicate. But it's not just about the words. Take the parrot, and now you infuse energy and excitement, and now people want to hear it because they, they tune into that energy. Or if something's upsetting or sad, they take those words, and they're very clear, but they speak with empathy. Or eagles speak with confidence, and they change their tone. Uh, but it's really all of those. It's the clarity of the owl, the confidence of an eagle, the empathy of a dove, the energy of a parrot. If you can do that, you can connect with anybody. And the most effective uh, people in the public eye, whether it's in politics or entertainment or news, that's what they do. Do you think, Mark, that governments, I know this is a conspiracy theory, so you don't have to answer it. Uh, do you think governments could possibly control your personality through social media by saying certain words, certain certain suggestions, certain ways that they could get to the eagle or the owl and the parrot and the dove? I'm not sure if it controls personality, but there is no doubt that the way in which we communicate can can either manipulate or inspire. Uh, and, and there's no doubt that that happens. If you ever watch someone who's a, uh, you know, a, a magician and they, they can literally make you say a certain word like they say here's the word they write it on a, on a on a whiteboard and then they have a conversation with you and then all of a sudden they made you say pink elephant and then it's written on the board and it's like wait how did you know i was going to say that they manipulated the situation so uh, you know to me the styles or the personality styles are really about just understanding people and connecting certainly any tool put in the wrong hands, of course, is what you weaponize it. And, and that's not the point of the birds. But that you're right, though. I mean, I, I think that the, it's the problem of, of social media that people can be manipulated. And, and they, they yeah. certainly have been. There's tons of examples over the past year that that's true. I mean, I, I think I'm a good advocate. I think social media is a good thing. I mean, obviously, there's good it, it, people forget, even before social media wasn't around, there's still a lot of anti this, anti that. I mean, for every one good argument, you can find 20 bad ones. I mean, like the vaccines, you'll find one, like 20 pages of research saying how wonderful they are and 30 pages of wonderful they're not. It's just depending, like you say, which personality you are, which way you're drawn to it. Yeah, I, and, and, and like we said in the beginning, our, our personality plays out in everything we do. And, and, and the, the, what's fascinating to me is the more you pay attention to it, the more you see it. Uh, the more you start tuning into, oh, this person is an eagle. That person's an owl. And you start, you start looking for it and you start seeing it. And then what you're able to do is actually use it. Now I know how to talk to you better. Now I know how to communicate information to you or motivate you. And, and so the, the better we know ourselves, the more we can understand others, the better we can. It's a strange world. It really is. I, 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 I love reality TV, like you say. That's a perfect example of um, personalities, as you're saying. It's oh, funny how we're drawn they, to it. We're drawn yeah, to it we're like, like flies, aren't we? We shouldn't be. Yeah. It shouldn't interest us one bit. It's just people like us doing normal people things like we do, but we're just like absolutely glued to it. And, and they pick extreme personalities because extreme personalities are interesting to watch. Imagine an extreme parrot with an extreme owl. And the parrot's just like, let's just do it. And the owl's like, we need a plan. We need a process. We need to organize ourselves. And then the parrot's already it's building the boat and is rowing his water into the, you know, heading out into the ocean from the island. And the owl's like, what's happening? can't leave yet so they, these reality tv shows are fantastic for picking extreme versions of each of the styles i imagine that's the job of the um booker as i say in it they deliberately as you say when you come in the building say you come in and i come in they're thinking will there be a clash there yes he has this idea he has that idea yes there's going to be a clash is there i think that's right i think you know when you watch shows you see it even among the judges you know like whether you know in, in the u.s it'd be like america's got talent or britain's got talent you have somebody like simon cowell who's 
who's such a strong eagle. Though I think he's turned his eagle down a little bit. He's become more of a dove over the years. He's still an eagle, but he's become more empathetic than he was uh, 20 years ago. But you'll notice they will pick other judges. You pick one judge who's a parrot. They're going to be the comedian. You pick one judge who's very empathetic and they're very caring. Uh, and they're supportive. You pick one judge who's going to analyze what they did and what they liked and what they didn't like, and that's the owl. And even among the judges, they'll pick four judges who are completely different because then it creates interaction among them that's fun to watch, and everybody relates. The owls relate to the owl feedback. The dove relates to the dove person. The parrots like the funny person. The eagle likes that Simon Cowell is going to be direct and to the point. And so it's fun to watch because there's an interesting dynamic it, it, it really does fascinate me. <laughs> I, I'm finding this subject more fascinating than every t- minute we're talking because I can see all these things now in my head. What other projects have you got in line then, Merrick? Uh, this year is all about children. Uh, I have a new children's book coming out called Which Bird Are You? And I, and I created a new assessment for children. So children can take a profile and discover out discover which bird style they are. And I just love it because it's not only does it give the child a sense of their superpower, what makes them special, but it also gives them, a, it gives their parents a report that has a special section, here's how you parent this child. And another section for teachers, here's how you teach and support and guide this child. So my goal for, for uh, 2021 and 2022 is to bring the birds to children. That is, that's what's on the plate for me. Yeah, as we mentioned before, I think you, that has got potential. If if there's any TV executives listening, to, they listen to people like myself. I think it has got potential. I really do believe that because I think we now need a more moral guide to tall children. Because there there was um, a big t- thing on the telly the other day how lots of girls at school are now feeling sexually. Um, attacked or abused in some way uh, i'm thinking well that's probably because anyone can tap in the word free porn on any site and it'll come up doesn't there's no age limit as such is it there, there, there's no my, my hope actually in bringing the birds to children is that it, it helps to minimize bullying that it helps children to understand each other so that they don't pick on each other but it also helps them to be more confident. So we know when children are more confident, they stand in their power. This is true for adults too. We, we create happy lives for ourselves. So my goal is help children understand themselves, help them understand others. Hopefully bullying will go away. Hopefully conflict will be minimized. And, and it just, it's really, we'll, we'll set them on a path to happiness right at the beginning. And, uh, I'd like to finish my show by first letting you mention where people can find your websites or your books or anything else you wish to mention. Sure. So uh, two websites. One, if you want to learn about me speaking, my books, you can go to MerrickRosenberg.com or you can go to TakeFlightLearning.com to learn about the training programs that we offer. And, And the books are really wherever, especially online books are sold, Amazon, you can purchase them and they're an audible as well so you can listen to them if you like to if you like to listen to books they uh they're a lot of fun especially the fables and the chameleon it's a lot of fun to listen to the characters of of the eagles parrots doves and owls i imagine you found that process quite interesting when you chose someone to read the book because yet again it has to tie in with the personality (laughs) Yeah, and I, you know, there's there's a chameleon wisdom section after each fable, which teaches you now how do you apply it in your life. So I read the chameleon wisdom section, but but I I, I found just uh, Alison Briggs was phenomenal, and she did all the character voices and really brought the birds to life, and it just was fantastic. And and I, I wanted to, I actually wanted to do that. You know, most people, if a male or if a man writes a book, a man reads it. If a woman writes a book, a woman reads it. You know what? I wanted this to really appeal to everyone. Uh, I, I intentionally hired a woman to read the fables. In addition, the chameleon, who's that all-knowing character, you know, most that Yoda-like character in Star Wars, they're always men. Like, you know what? Why they should be, There should be these women characters who are all the all-knowing characters. So the, the 
all-knowing chameleon who's in the book is a woman as well. So I really well, wanted this to appeal to everyone and really show that, look, this is for all of us, and, and let's break down some barriers and, and old paradigms and teach people about ourselves. Funny you should say that, because believe it or not, when the Doctor became a woman, the Doctor Who character became a woman, yes. the kick-up right. was amazing. It was absolutely electric. And I found him thinking, well, there's nothing in the the Doctor Who universe that says what sex he is. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. And to have a woman who's confident and take charge and assertive, it's like that Wonder Woman character who is like, we're making it happen. Like, we don't need the man to save the day. I'm going to save the day. And I, and I think that is a, a great role model and energy to put out there. Well, uh, Mary, I always ask my guests the following question. Merrick, what, what is your unique sign-off? Well, I always tell people that it's time to take flight with the world. It is time to share our style and our personality and, and let it shine. And my aim for you today is this, Merrick. Today, I talked to an owl, a parrot, a dove, and an eagle. By the name of Merrick Ros- Rosenberg, who has done a book called Taking Flight and the Comedian, and his latest book, which he just told you about on our podcast. Please look it up. And he talked about how personality affects us. Now, if you've been listening, why don't you answer the question that we've been asking, which bird are you?